Spring has finally arrived in my corner of the world. On Celtic calendars, the traditional start of spring is on Imbolc in February. Imbolc marks the start of lambing season and stirrings of new life in the landscape. Still, despite the lambs in the fields, spring feels slow to arrive. The weather is still cool and wet, the trees are bare, and the orchards are gray and grim. I used to really struggle to stay optimistic in this season, but over the years I started to appreciate the slow fall between winter and spring. Learning to romanticize life has made me so much more appreciative and aware of the subtle shifts between seasons. It's easy to look at a hedgerow and only see a tangle of brown branches and thorny vines and miss the hawthorn slowly beginning to bud. Or wander over to an apple orchard and see bare trees missing the purple dead nettle that is blooming at the roots. Learning the names of different plants and how to identify them helps bring the whole scene into focus. It makes me notice details I would easily have overlooked in the past. Sometimes I think the big difference between romanticizing your life and not is just perspective. You can look at an early spring scene and observe the muddy trails, the bare trees, and only a scattering of green beginning to emerge on the ground. Or you can appreciate the bird song that has returned to the woods, the feel of the air not biting your skin, and start to notice all the different shades of green, all the different types of plants that are emerging. Neither observation is false, but one is tinged with a bit more optimism and wonder. Foraging makes you more aware of those subtle shifts between seasons. You have to know when to go out to gather different plants because the window of picking might be relatively slim. Right now is the perfect time to gather wild garlic. In a few weeks, these plants will be full of white flowers but some of the best foraging is to be done before they bud. The young leaves are the most tender and full of flavor. Wild garlic grows abundantly in the woods near me, so it's never hard to find a patch to gather from. As the name implies, wild garlic has a rich garlicky smell and flavor. The smell makes this plant easy to identify from some more dangerous lookalikes, and once it does flower, the plant is equally distinctive. Some of the trails I follow through the woods and fields are actually badger trails. You never know you're following a badger trail until the path leads you to a fence line that no human can follow. Their dens always look so cozy in spring, surrounded by green leaves and dappled sunlight. I can easily imagine some wind in the willows friends safe and below, maybe reading from their books with a cozy fire going. Some signs of spring are a bit harder to spot, like the tiny wild violets. They're so small and scattered that I can easily pass by a patch without noticing them. But once I manage to find one wild violet, there's always dozens more nearby. I like learning the history of different flowers, where the names come and what they symbolize. It kind of connects me to the nature now, but also to the people who came before me and what they saw when they looked at these plants. Wild violets symbolize modesty and faithfulness. In Victorian times, a gift of violets was a declaration to always be true. In Greek times, they had a similar meaning, and one legend says that Artemis turned a nymph into a violet to protect her from Apollo. It makes sense to me that so many parts of nature are tied to legends and folklore. Spring always feels a bit like magic. Watching the woods transform and the birds return and flowers emerge from ground that was once frozen, hard as stone, is astounding. And I think of all the people who came before me who walked these paths and found the same sort of wonder in the landscape. How does that one quote go? You can look at the world as if nothing is a miracle or as if everything is a miracle. Sometimes I think romanticizing my life is just choosing the latter, letting myself feel the wonder of the changing seasons marveling at the beauty of spring. Perhaps romanticizing your life is just another way of expressing gratitude, 
of appreciating things. I don't quite have the patience or schedule to make all my food from scratch. Making a big batch of wild garlic flavored butter is perfect though. You get a taste of spring in your food, but it's not a very complicated process. I appreciate my food more when I have to make things from scratch. Chopping your forage greens, hand mixing and seasoning your butter, all of that takes time. It forces you to be more present in the moment. Of course, like with foraging, it's something I only do in moderation. I like making a big patch of wild garlic flavored butter to use in various recipes and meals, and I'll freeze half for later too. Thomas found all of these fun vintage kitchen tools, like these butter paddles. I think they were originally used in the process of making butter. You could use them to beat the excess milk out. My butter is already processed though, so I'm using them to shape mine. With the wild violets, I want to try a new recipe. I think the ability to stay curious is one of the best skills you can have in life. And I try to cultivate that by continuing to learn and experiment. New foraging recipes, learning new cooking techniques, it all helps me feel more present in the season. The window for picking wild violets is narrow, so if I want to cook with them, then I have to do it now. Wild violets are especially fun to work with because they truly are an example of spring magic in motion. I'm starting my new recipe by making a wild violet syrup, which requires leaving the flowers to steep in water overnight. When you come back the next day, the flowers have turned the water a lovely shade of blue and added their light floral scent and flavor to the water. To make the syrup, you bring that liquid to a boil and add equal parts of sugar. The spring magic I mentioned earlier happens when you add lemons to the wild violets. The syrup goes from blue to the prettiest shade of pink. It's so fun to watch it change and the color is so pretty too. Now you have a wild violet lemonade, which I'm going to use to make gummies.
I know so many syrup recipes with foraged flowers and fruits, but I personally don't use a lot of syrup. So I thought learning to make gummies would be a good way to still get some of the benefits of wild plants, but in a way that I'll actually enjoy them. Sort of like homemade gummy vitamins. Of course, these ones aren't really that healthy, but rather like biting into springtime. And that's a taste I can savor.